so beyond is is a fast growing ecosystem orchestration and digital business platform provider we power organizations to launch new services fast and to help them grow revenue by utilizing our digital platform and our SaaS BSS. So what does that mean? Well, in essence, we provide an additional layer which enables CSPs to provide the solutions that their customers want to buy. This will be super important in 5G and Edge because then it's all about solutioning. The other thing which is key is that uh, we, this layer is hyper automated and completely frictionless. So in working with partners, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 partners, however many partners you've got to co-create solutions, it's in a super efficient way, which means using standard APIs, it's far simpler than the standard systems integration and far higher margin than a simple app store. Yes, so back in 2014, we started to reorientate our business away from the sort of classic mass consumer BSS towards marketplaces, platforms, and ecosystem orchestration, particularly for the enterprise and SMB markets. We saw the huge opportunity really for CSPs around these new platform-based business models. We collaborated with, with Jeff Parker, who wrote Platform Revolution and is a leading luminary in, in uh, MIT's initiative for this digital economy. Um, what, we, what we really saw was with, with 5G and the new campus networks, an explosion in new technologies, an opportunity for really for CSPs to reverse the decline in traditional connectivity revenue by moving towards solutions. Um, enterprises and SMB customers really want to solve simple problems within their business, whether that is reducing rework, cutting inventories, or reducing the cost of manufacture. And CSPs have really got a stark choice now. Do they provide a solution to these business problems and help the customer solve those problems like reduced inventories? Or do they just want to provide the connectivity piece? If they want to provide a solution, it means working with partners to create the perfect solution to that problem. If they want to sell just connectivity, it's about finding an alternative solution provider and selling connectivity based on price. We think that CSPs will do a combination of the two, probably pick one or two priority sectors, but also work on wholesale and selling connectivity as well as a horizontal solution. Actually, the data here suggests there's a lot of confusion within the CSP community. All too often, uh, ecosystems are talked about rather than really understanding what it takes and what it means. So let me give you an example. So over 47% of enterprises uh, would increase their spend with CSPs if they met their needs. In 2020, Omni did this fantastic 5G market survey, and they said that 21% of 5G solutions were being led by CSPs and 7% by alternative solution providers, and 32% by enterprises doing DIY. Now, what we would have expected to see is that that 21% um, increasing and CSP is playing a larger role. But if you look at the 2021 data, what we're seeing is that actually the CSP-led proportion of the market has shrunk by 5%. They've gone down from 21% to 16%. Conversely, the alternative solution providers have gone from 7 to 20% jumped by 20% overall. And as we'd expect, enterprises DIY, that's declined quite considerably by 12%. So what we're seeing is that the CSPs are paying less of a role in leading 5G solutions than we would have expected. Uh, and you ask enterprises why this is, and 39% really point to the fact that the, it's the problems with an innovation and solution relevancy where the CSPs are struggling. So if I say, well, why is that? I think it is partly because uh, there's a lot of focus on bundling. And here we're talking about solutioning. It's around starting with a customer, starting with a problem in the industry vertical, and really creating the ecosystem of partners to perfectly solve a problem for the customer. That means a more fundamental organizational change, less stovepipe, less centralized, 
and also means changes to IT. It means working with an ecosystem of partners to co-create solutions. It means, I mean, being working in a more iterative and agile way to rapidly put something in front of the customer to test ideas and bring the customer far closer into the solution development to really understand the problem they're trying to solve. So current IT is not automated enough, doesn't allow partners, not open enough, and really they don't focus on orchestrating and monetizing an ecosystem. It's really that old linear business model. And here we're talking about a platform, multi-sided business model, and orchestrating ecosystem of partners. So to help answer that question, I would really separate into four different type of ecosystem models. The first one is marketplaces, creating solution and selling with partners. The second is expanding market reach and adding really channel partners at the front end. The third is economies of scale and really achieving global reach where you have one platform across multiple geographies. And the fourth type of, of ecosystem model is really joint offerings with customers, the classic B2B2X. So who is doing it right? Um, I have a TTW keynote with Brahim Gideon, CTO of Telus, on the 13th of October. And you can hear more about building uh, ecosystems B2B and B2B2X. I think Telus is definitely one of those CSPs getting it right across all their multiple, multiple major lines of business, particularly marketplaces and selling with partners. Uh, Telia Division X is another uh, with its six different geographies and a single global platform solving them. And it's more iterative and agile delivery models to drive innovation. Uh, is doing it right on marketplaces, definitely achieving economies of scale across the geographies and its global reach, but also working with customers in a B2B2X way to create those solutions for those customers. Finally, Altibox uh, in the Nordics uh, is a great example of that channel partner model. They have 38 partners who they sell through and they really get efficiency in terms of driving sales with 38 channel partners, all of whom form part of their ecosystem. As I explained, we really recognize the importance of platforms, marketplaces, and ecosystem orchestration maybe six or seven years ago. And I like to think we've driven a lot of the thought leadership on, on this topic. In addition, we've continued to provide some co-leadership of some of the important initiatives uh, within TM Forum, such as co-leadership of, of, of open APIs. Um, for this TM, to TMF DTW, you know, our DBM4 market, digital marketplace catalyst, together with a huge array of tier one CSPs and partners really helps look to solve industry 4.0 and uh, smart solution problems. It really continues to blaze a trail in terms of really taking the thinking one step further forward. Likewise, our autonomous Hyperloops uh, phase two catalysts um, is in, into that ne next, next phase. So providing following COVID, this catalyst provides and really reimagines new disruptive services that will be completely autonomous, are designed for zero fault operations with auto scaling based on customer expectations. Uh, this project will examine autonomous networks that can enable this new normal by designing, prototyping new value generating services for cities, entertainment and industry. I might also give a plug for our three joint presentations. So I'm talking with Brahim Gideon uh, on the 13th of October, and we're really talking about building ecosystems B2B and B2B2X, the opportunity. Secondly, uh, Andres Gabriel, our CTO, is talking with Bob Pike from Intel, uh, their smart edge division, around why edge requires a new approach to your IT. And that's on the 6th of October. It's really super interesting in terms of looking how the, the industry needs to move from operations and management to orchestration. And then finally, Mikhail Harris, our head of marketing, uh, is talking with Erm Law, who's a solution architect from AWS, around what, what do enterprises and SMBs need and expect from their CSPs. I think the SMB topic is hugely important. It's a real hot topic at the, uh, at the moment. And I, I encourage everyone to go and see it on the 30th of September. Thank you.